Hello, I'm Bill Starkey, the Chief Architect of IBM's Power 10 microprocessor. Today, I'm going to take you through the system level details of Power 10. Then I'll hand it off to our Chief Core Architect, Brian Tomto, and he will unveil the core's capabilities. But first, a little context. Over the 10 years shown here, and many more before that, Power has been fundamentally about the enterprise and about extreme scale. This isn't some consumer grade piece of high tech jewelry. It's not under the hood of a beautiful new automobile. It's the building block for the world's most powerful supercomputers, applied to science, to defeating COVID-19. Even more importantly, it powers the systems that enable our world to operate. Financial systems, commerce, healthcare, governments. Power 10 is built for the enterprise of the future, one that is mobilized by cloud capabilities and made smarter by AI technologies a bulletproof fortress of security and resiliency. We have first hardware back in our labs and we are making excellent progress toward testing the chip and the first wave of systems. We are on track to delivering Power 10 systems a little over a year from now. Today, we'll talk about Power 10's data plane, built upon bandwidth, enabling multifaceted connectivity and scale. About the enterprise strengths of the core, about new security capabilities co-optimized across the stack, about from the ground up re-architecting for energy efficiency, and finally, about the maturing AI landscape. Just as we hope for our children, AI models grow up. They graduate from training and get jobs in the real world. Acceleration needs to get pushed into the processor core, infusing AI directly into the enterprise workflows. So here is the chip, a beautiful photo, thanks to our partners at Samsung Foundry. 18 billion transistors in Samsung's 7 nanometer technology, and with a few IBM tricks baked in, courtesy of our rich research and development collaboration. Two packaging options, but I'll get into that in a moment. We also have two variants of our core, a smaller, four-threaded version, and more powerful eight-threaded enterprise version. Today, we'll talk about the enterprise core. We offer up to 15 per chip, each with two megabytes of L2 cache, backed by a robust 120 megabytes of L3 at the chip level. Those with a keen eye will notice 16 physical cores on the chip. We tend to get high demand for our highest core count offerings. Having a built-in spare vastly improves the economics of servicing those demands. We feed these powerful hungry cores with a massive data plane interface to the outside world. The chip perimeter is filled with high bandwidth, low energy fives, comprising our OMI and Power AXON signaling infrastructure, as well as our PCI Gen 5 I.O. attach, but more on these later. Power 10 comes in two packaging form factors. The single chip module maximizes energy and data bandwidth per core. It also provides topological flexibility for systems ranging all the way up to 16 gluelessly connected Power 10 chips. The dual chip module maximizes dense compute throughput and I.O. connectivity by compromising energy per core and memory attached per core while limiting SMP topologies to one to four sockets. When people talk about cloud, they often think just about two and four socket systems. With our Power 10 dual chip module, we gain impressive strength there. But cloud isn't only about force fitting into those form factors. By optimizing our 16 socket big iron systems for cloud as well, we enable scale and elasticity far beyond what any small system can provide. Last year, we introduced the Power AXON and open memory interfaces, which are foundational to Power 10. Built upon high bandwidth, low latency, low energy CERTES technology, they run high lane counts at up to 32 gigatransfers per second using straightforward packaging, 150 micron bumps. The result is a combined two terabytes per second per Power 10 chip with optimized placement for module and system planar simplicity, more economical than expensive microbump packaging for achieving bandwidth, and more flexible, enabling pluggability and even cabling for distance. These are both highly flexible interfaces, but first, let's look at how they are used for more conventional purposes, yet provide unconventional value add. In Power 10, Power AXON is used for all chip-to-chip SMP connectivity 
from small two-socket systems to the largest 16-socket robustly scalable systems. No ASICs or NUMA controllers, just 16 Power 10 chips. A whole lot of bandwidth and several decades of coherence, transport, and protocol innovation. So what will Power 10 add for the large enterprise space? We've built in compute capacity growth, a stronger thread, more bandwidth, and several new scaling capabilities. Compared to an already strong Power E980 system, Power 10 Big Iron raises the ceiling substantially higher. OMI memory, which we introduced here last year, is the grandchild of the Centaur memory we unveiled here several years ago along with Power 8. It is technology agnostic, so it can attach to any memory media with an OMI compliant buffer. Since DDR4 DRAM is still the bread and butter of the main memory tier, Power 10 will launch with the OMI DDR4 buffer chip built by Microchip that we introduced here last year. The cost and bandwidth efficiencies enable up to 410 gigabytes per second of peak DDR4 bandwidth per Power 10 chip. That's at a chip level, not a system level, while incurring less than 10 nanoseconds of extra latency. They've built an impressive solution. And the nice thing about OMI, when DDR5 is ready, we can simply replace DDR4 DIMMs with DDR5 DIMMs. No new system, no new processor chip. Looking at broader possibilities, Consider a GPU, rigidly packaged with HBM memory on an expensive microbump module. Using a GDDR buffer in a standard OMI DIMM form factor, you can push 800 gigabytes per second sustained without the rigidity or cost. Not quite the bandwidth HBM can push into a GPU, but highly differentiated for a general purpose processor. Or, at the other end of the spectrum, you could put a high capacity persistent storage class memory into a standard OMI DIMM form factor. Might be a nice way to start filling up Power 10's two petabyte physical address range. Power 10 also supports OpenCAPI, an open asymmetric protocol for coherently attaching compute accelerators, memory devices, networking, and storage, which first showed up in Power 9. The memory piece of the protocol, like OMI, is well suited to attaching storage class memory, but in a device slot or cabled external enclosure instead of a DIMM slot. Power 10 introduces a bold new member to the Power AXON family, memory inception. As the world evolves toward cloud, the economic promise of disaggregated infrastructure has been a tantalizing proposition. Marketing chartware describing rack scale architectures and iconic names like the machine inspire the dream of extending resource sharing beyond the server. Power 10 takes a large step by enabling systems to directly share each other's main memory. Full hardware load store access to the other guy's memory as if it was in your own computer. Latency, roughly only 50 to 100 nanoseconds worse than a remote socket in your own system good enough to still be used as main tier memory. How might this be used? Well, consider a pod of eight two socket servers, each with eight terabytes of memory. Imagine three premium workloads, each consuming the compute resources of a server, but with differing memory requirements. While workload A could run happily without a memory clustering capability, look at workloads B and C. They both need three times more memory than a single box can provide. By borrowing from their neighbors, their needs are met. Fundamentally, we can cut memory costs since we don't need to configure each server to meet spike demand. But this is a small example. With Power 10's two petabyte physical address range, we can think big. How about instead of clustering eight small systems, why not use the biggest, baddest 16 socket systems? And why stop at eight of them? Why not pull together all two petabytes worth of shareable capacity? Or consider a hub and spoke topology, maybe a large system maxed out on memory and several small, dense, inexpensive servers without any memory at all, borrowing from the mothership. There are lots of possibilities. Instead of just sharing with your neighbor, why not build messaging software? Write to the memory that lives across the data center by retranslating addresses at every hop, using page tables as routing tables, using two petabyte addressability for routing IDs, 
and incorporating robust virtual channel management, a fully hardware managed end-to-end -end messaging capability is possible. Thousands of nodes, flexible topologies, robust bisection bandwidth, low latency, cables only, no extra gear. Memory inception for pod level memory resource pooling or for clustering up to thousands of nodes without any extra gear. Power 10 opens the door to memory disaggregation, transforming cloud infrastructure economics. Last, but certainly not least, Power 10 incorporates high bandwidth benefits of PCI Gen 5 and the breadth of the PCI ecosystem, up to 64 lanes per socket in the dual chip module offering. Before handing this over, I want to share a performance analysis of a Power 10 dual socket system compared to its direct Power 9 predecessor, a Power 9 S924 system. 3x performance relative to Power 9. That is an outsized gain for one generation, our strongest in over a decade. And for memory, we see the positive impact of OMI. Brian, our chief core architect, will walk through the IPC and energy efficiency details underneath those integer, commercial enterprise, and floating point gains. And just wait till he shows you the larger gains for AI inference. Brian, take it away. Thank you, Bill. I'm Brian Tomto, and I'm excited to share with you many of the innovations and capabilities of our Power 10 processor core that help make Power 10 ideally suited for mission critical applications and the opportunities of the enterprise cloud. The Power 10 core was focused first and foremost with providing gains in performance while at the same time reducing the energy consumption required. This resulted in a new microarchitecture that delivers extraordinary generational gains in computational efficiency. Compared with Power 9, the Power 10 core delivers an average of 30% performance improvement across a range of workloads and 20% gains for single thread. Combined with a ground-up focus on energy efficiency, the Power 10 core provides a 2.6x improvement in performance per watt. At the socket level, these efficiency gains are further amplified as we're able to pack in significantly more cores in our DCM socket and operate at a more efficient operating point, delivering 3x improvements in performance and efficiency. Using the same modular building block concepts as Power 9, the Power 10 core provides deployment flexibility, supporting up to 8 threads, and providing for a second chip variation with four threads per core and twice as many cores. That is, up to 30 big SMT8 cores or 60 SMT4 cores per socket. A second major focus for the new Power 10 design was to supercharge the processing core to accelerate AI, enabling infusion into the enterprise applications. As seen in the core die photo, these capabilities were built into every layer of the design, cache, load store, SIMD, and the introduction of a matrix math accelerator providing 4x throughput gains versus Power 9. We'll go into each of these themes a little deeper in the remainder of this presentation. As depicted on the right side of this diagram, the modular Power 10 core provides enterprise flexibility and supports from 1 to 8 active threads with an optimized balance of resource sharing, isolation, and efficiency. This flexibility extends to supporting a world-class set of software stacks, including AIX, IBM I, Enterprise Linux, and container-based stacks including OpenShift, all designed to run side-by-side -side in the same socket with the PowerVM hypervisor. Power10 extends this flexibility by supporting the KVM hypervisor running on top of PowerVM as a high-performance nested hypervisor. This opens the door to additional deployment flexibility for KVM and supports enhanced security. Enabling a host of new capabilities in the processor core and system Power 10 implements the Power ISA version 3.1. The new ISA was also contributed to the Open Power Foundation and extends Power's commitment to open communities and supporting an open development ecosystem. The new ISA supports 64 bit prefix instructions in a risk friendly way, in addition to classic 32 bit instruction forms. This adds new capabilities to existing instructions, such as PC relative addressing, as well as providing a rich new opcode space ready for future expansion. Power 10 supports over 200 new instructions, including 32-byte loads and stores, and new AI accelerating instructions and data types. It also adds a number of advanced system capabilities designed for the connected cloud with enablement for the Swiss Army knife of Power 10 connectivity that Bill showed us, including memory inception, 
advanced storage optimizations and memory tiers, as well as enhanced security measures. Enterprise-grade security requires delivering on security across the software stacks. The Power 10 processor builds on a strong foundation of security and isolation, co-optimized from the hardware through each secure virtualization layer and the application layers, as depicted in the right side of this chart. Confidential computing capabilities are enhanced in Power 10, enabling the deployment of secure containers in the enterprise cloud. In this co-engineered approach between hardware and the PowerVM hypervisor, secure containers are isolated and protected from threads in the application and virtualization layers, allowing Power 10 to extend the traditional level of platform security to the latest cloud-oriented software and frameworks. Power 10 also includes full and transparent memory encryption, providing additional security in the cloud data center. Applications on Power 10 can also take advantage of higher performance core cryptography and active management measures in the processor core to provide enhanced performance while retaining robust side channel avoidance. Now, let's take a deeper look at the performance and efficiency foundations of the Power 10 core. Depicted in this chart is a block diagram showing the high-level core microarchitecture for Power 10. The resources shown support between one and four threads, one half of the SMTA core. Instructions are fetched from the L2 cache, in the lower right, up through the pre-decode and into the level one instruction cache. Power 10 then decodes and dispatches instructions to the execution slices at up to eight instructions per thread and 16 per SMTA core. The execution slices on Power 10 are each double the width of Power 9 each able to do 128-bit SIMD operation per cycle, and each with fixed, float, permute, and crypto capabilities. The core also includes matrix math acceleration engines, providing a 4x growth in flops and AI data type support. Power 10 supports significantly larger working sets, including four times the L2 capacity, four times the TLB capacity, and a 50% larger instruction cache. Power 10 also supports deeper instruction windows, larger queues, with up to 1,000 instructions in flight per SMTA core. Data latency access was also reduced. L1 data store forwarding is performed with the nominal load to use latency of four cycles, eliminating two cycles and associated pipeline disruptions. Access to L2, L3, and TLB were also reduced. Two cycles less for L2 cache and eight cycles less for the L3. For branches, we doubled the BHT predictor and have included new tag predictors for both indirect and relative branches. We also made a significant change to branch execution, merging the branch pipeline into the execution slices and targets into the main register files. This reduces latency and improves efficiency. We leveraged the new prefix instruction detection circuitry in the pre-decode to also identify instruction fusion opportunities. Power 10 supports a wide array of fusion sequences, including scalar and SIMD instructions, eliminating dependencies, as well as supporting fusion between consecutive loads or stores utilizing each of the wider load and store pipes to handle two instructions at once. Combined with store gathering in the core, each store port to the L2 can drain up to four stores per cycle. So, a lot of changes for performance, but to accomplish our goals for Power 10, we had to redesign from day one for efficiency. This included deployment of enhanced tools, physical design techniques, and innovations in the microarchitecture. Each design element was re-examined to improve clock gating, and reduce switching capacitance. Many of the improvements for performance also paid double dividends in efficiency by reducing wasted work. In addition, we benefited from redesigning major structures such as queues and register files with a focus on port reduction. That included changing our level one data and instruction cache structures to be EA tagged. This allows instructions to flow through the pipeline without the need to perform address translation. The ERAT, for example, is only accessed on a cache miss, and tracking structures took advantage of simpler tagging to improve efficiency. All of this redesign and innovation result in significant improvements in both performance and performance per watt. The Power 10 core achieves 30% improvement in IPC while consuming one half the power, a 2.6x improvement in core efficiency compared with Power 9. At the socket level, this adds up to an aggregate of 3x improvement at a more efficient operating point, and as Bill showed, also translates into 3x performance. The Power 10 core supports the seamless integration of AI in the enterprise cloud. Our AI focus is partly about the compute, 
but it's also about the data. Machine learning algorithms depend on the ability to move and prepare data and feed computations effectively. So Power 10 also focused on something a little more traditional to computing, providing robust bytes per flop. Moving from Power 9 to Power 10, we doubled the ability to bring in data from every level of cache and from memory to the compute engines. That is, 2x from the L1 cache, enabled by wider load and store instructions and fusion, up to four 32-byte loads or two 32-byte stores per cycle per SMT core. As AI inference goes to work in the enterprise cloud, individual cores can also be central to data ingestion or for feeding transactional inference. So we plumbed in 2x bandwidth from memory through to the cores, and we can sustain a rate of 120 gigabytes per second out of a 256 gigabyte per second peak read plus write with a single SMT8 core. That's 2x on the byte side of our story. Now let's look at the flops. We doubled our SIMD engines to 8 per SMT8 core to provide bandwidth match compute and tackle data preparation as well as a host of machine learning algorithms. We did this while staying within our existing 128-bit SIMD register architecture, providing flexibility to software while boosting the performance in existing binaries. We also focused on algorithms that were hungry for flops, such as the matrix math utilized in deep learning. Every core has built-in matrix math acceleration that efficiently perform matrix outer product operations. These operations were optimized across a wide range of data types, recognizing that various precisions can be best suited for specific machine learning algorithms, we included very broad support. Double precision, single precision, two flavors of half precision, including both IEEE and BFLOAT16, as well as reduced precision integer, 16, 8, and 4-bit. The result is 64 flops per cycle of double precision and up to 1K ops per cycle of reduced precision math per SMT8 core. These operations were tailor-made to be efficient while applying to machine learning. The reduced precision operations accumulate into 32-bit results, preserving precision and reducing algorithmic overhead. You can see one of these MMA operations depicted in the upper right. This efficient matrix math that is performed is based on just 128-bit operands, two of them, and accumulate into a 512-bit result register. Per SMT8 core, we can do four of these operations per cycle. Just as for the main SIMD engines, the new matrix math acceleration doesn't require any new architected register state and minimizes software ecosystem disruption. It also enables performance for machine learning frameworks and applications to be employed by simply updating libraries in many cases. Re-referencing the die photo in the lower right, all of that matrix math happens in the blue rectangle on the right side. With a purpose-built structure that leverages data reuse efficiency, the accumulated result data is stored local to the computation, while opera operands are streamed in from the cache hierarchy for 2x efficiency versus traditional SIMD. These operations provide 4x plus throughput per core and also significantly reduce latency. A three times inference latency reduction for a single thread using single precision and a six times reduction in latency for integer eight. At the socket level, you get 10 times the performance per socket for double and single precision and using reduced precision, bfloat 16 is sped up to over 15x and int eight inference sped up to over 20x versus power nine. This gives Power 10 the AI horsepower to integrate AI intelligence in enterprise applications. Now, let's review how the main technology themes of Power 10 provide extraordinary capability for the enterprise cloud, whether on-prem, public, or hybrid. A robust data plane enables the most resilient, scalable SMP servers and provides unparalleled flexibility for deploying workloads in the enterprise clouds of today and tomorrow. A new enterprise core provides significant performance and efficiency gains and was co-optimized to run flexibly with world-class software stacks. Security was engineered across the stack to provide enterprise asset protection to the latest class of cloud deployment scenarios and software. And extreme generational gains of 3x performance and efficiency improve computational capacity across a broad range of workloads. Finally, in-core accelerated support for AI inference provides 10 to 20x generational speedups to power AI infusion into enterprise application workflows. These demonstrate how Power 10 was truly built for the enterprise cloud.